gentlemen welcome to know the therapist my name is jennifer i'm a counseling psychologist and i'm an author and i'm your host today i am joined by a wonderful lady called lynette gadoni and she'll be joining the live in just a second i am waiting for her to get notified that we are live so that she can join the session i hope you have had a great day i hope you're doing well and that you're excited for this live as much as i am yeah I'm very excited to speak to Sony Gadoni. That's her Instagram handle. She's joining just right now. So in the paper ready to write some things that you may hear that will be quite interesting. Then this is your time to do that, to go and get that. Um Oh, there she is. Hey. Hi. Hey, how are you, Sodi? Gadoni? I'm I'm reading your handle. <laughs> I'm reading your handle. I am fine. Karibu I'm sana fine. to the live. I hope you can hear me and see me clearly. Uh, I can yes, hear and I see can. you clearly as well. Okay. So, let's get started. Um the rest who are going to join are going to find us going on. The beauty of this thing is that it is recorded and so it will be shared on other platforms even if you don't get to see it on Instagram you'll get to see it on YouTube you'll get to see it on Facebook you'll get to see it everywhere so that's the beauty of this um conversation so Lynette Gadoni welcome very much to know the therapists at Infinity Wellness Consultants this is a show for mental health professionals to plug themselves and brag about their jobs and to completely go all out do those things that you never get to do so this is the show Um for those who don't know me I'm Jerica and I am the host and Lynette this is your chance for you to introduce yourself to the audience tell us a bit about who you are and what you do Hi thank you for having me Jennifer I really appreciate uh for this opportunity so my name is Lynette Gadon I am a counselor by profession and I'm also a trainer uh yeah what else mm mm-hmm. I'm a young counselor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I have done counseling for five years. Now. Uh-huh. Yeah. I focus mainly on the young people. Yeah. Yeah, and deal with so many issues, you know, like self-esteem issues, relationship issues, youth issues. Yeah. So, yeah, that's basically me. I'm a firstborn, I'm the sister, the firstborn sister. the first one of three yeah i don't know unless there's anything else i've missed out. no that is really good that is really good that is sufficient i'm sure whoever is if uh, when somebody is listening they have an idea of who you are you mentioned that you're a trainer uh, what kind of trainings do you do uh, i i do can uh, i train uh, psychologist i just do counseling psychology so that's what i really need to focus on oh ah, okay So you train like on what kind of topics? Uh diploma in counseling psychology you know how broad it is ah. the theories the life skills the counseling okay. skills yeah so primarily that so it's broad that, that means yeah. you have such a wide knowledge uh, in the in the field like you have uh, to get to to you have to understand so many concepts so different many different concepts how how does that work out for you Well it's a lot it's not easy because yeah. you know I, like i realize that uh, i'm like a doctor like i have to keep on reading i have to keep on adding content yeah cuz issues are different with every uh, with different um, people so it's it's a lot it's not easy because yeah. i have to constantly build especially on theories and you know that theories are everything for accounts like if you don't have them then there's nothing you're doing in the session so yeah so it's, it's been a bit difficult but like you know you have to be what is it called determined and yeah. understand what you have to do yeah, yeah. that's very true that's very yeah. true uh, you've been training the entire time the five years that you mentioned that you've been a counselor for five years have you been training the entire time or is it some is it uh, just therapy sessions individual ther- sessions you've been doing in the five years uh, uh no training i just started this month yeah i was doing tmt mm. training of trainers yeah. and so i started training this month 
Uh, for counseling, I graduated for my diploma 2019. Mm -hmm. So I've been practicing a few here and there, and I'm almost just done with my degree. So I'm just waiting for the graduation. So, yeah. Oh, okay. That's brilliant. That's uh, fantastic. We wish you nothing but the best on your graduation. May it be a joyous celebration. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Um, I'm very curious about how you ended up doing uh, psychology. Have you always been a psychologist? Um, did you start in another field and transition into psychology? How did you end up in this field? Um, hey, my journey has been, I don't know. So I, I started doing counseling. You know, the, like the, the counseling that I know those days. I started doing it when I was in primary and I didn't know what it was. It was just something I'm just doing, encouraging people and advising people. Then I went on to high school and I kept on doing it. Not knowing, of course, the things that you're going to be taught because we know that counseling is not advice given. So I, I started doing it in high school and I remember there's a time I was also discouraged to do it. Because I remember I, not just that period of high school, you are looking for what you want to do after high school. So you're going to consult your principal and all that stuff. So I remember I consulted her one day. She told me, Lynette, you can't do psychology, you can't do counseling because you're not good at biology. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so at, at that moment, I felt so discouraged. Then I was like, hey, I think I need to work hard quite biology. But at the same time, it, was, it, it also brought a lot of problems in school because my parents would be called because the principal would say, oh, I'm just focusing on doing sessions. Like, you know, if you don't, don't know, if you don't have someone who can build you and can see a gift in you, you would always try to, you know, to meddle in your life in one way or another. So I, I never stopped and I knew what I wanted after I finished high school. So immediately I was done, I just went straight on to do counseling psychology. And it, it, it's been a good journey so far. So for me, it was more mainly about the passion. And I didn't focus on other other interests. This has been purely something I've always loved since I was young. So yeah, so it's it's been only like passion driven, like a gift. Yes. That is quite interesting. Most people never know what they want to become until they are much older and they have tried 10 other careers. Um, it's quite interesting that for you, it, it came up at such an early age. How did you, how, how, how did you even know it was a thing? Like, I, I know you mentioned that you used to do just the counseling that you knew but how did you know how to do that counseling how did you um find out that you had the gift of talking to people and help them helping them calm their own emotions their own struggles how did that come about is it something in your background is it something that you read somewhere how did you stumble upon it honestly i, I don't know it's just i don't know it's just, just within me you know the things that that, that are within you you can't explain because yeah. it, it just starts out of nowhere like uh, people come to me for advice and i'll give them what i know at that level mm -hmm. so i don't know it was just like something in it yeah. like i was just born with it and it was time for me to exercise it one way or another yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah yeah that's quite interesting and i can imagine uh, the, the the teacher the teacher saying that um uh, you need to focus on biology and succeed in biology before you become a counselor <laughs> that is quite a thing because uh, biology and psychology, I don't see the connection entirely. I think you can still pursue one with the other. That must have been coming from a place of this. Exactly. <laughs> um, that is, that is uh, quite the thing. Um, and, and, and when you were studying, uh, when you were doing your diploma, because you mentioned you were doing your diploma and uh, you did your degree as well, and you waited for the graduation, how was, how was the training for you? Um, which school did you go to? How, did, how was the process, the years in school? How was that entire experience for you? Um, I went to a college called Kenya Institute of Business and Counseling Studies. It's in um, town, Moy Avenue, Southern House, yeah. So uh, the, I, got, I got to know about the place through my aunt who used to study counseling psychology. So I thought, let me, let me go. You know, just sometimes when you're referred somewhere is where you feel safe. Yeah. Because you know someone has experienced it. So that's why I went. The process was good. And I really, really enjoyed it. Because the diploma, they're very thorough. They are very 
practical. So I remember when I was studying my my my, my diploma, I, I was not getting the theories. It was a new concept, so hard and difficult. So I, at that time, I didn't get it. But the experience there was was amazing because of the support you get from the principal, the support you get, you know, from even the director of of that institution, from your colleagues. So it was a beautiful, beautiful experience for me. I really had an easy, easy time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I keep mentioning that uh, when we we in school when you study to become psychologists, we stumble upon the DSM and we start diagnosing ourselves with all manner of diseases, all manner of mental health issues. Um. And it feels like an a, like a whole um, being being in school studying psychology feels like being in an in one long session of therapy where you're learning so many things about yourself you're learning so many things about people you're learning so many th things about the science of psychology um, for you uh, during that time when you were studying what was the what was the most surprising thing that you learned about yourself because there's a kind of change that happens in a psychologist when they're studying psychology you don't come out the other end the same person you started for you what was the biggest surprising thing that you learned about yourself that shocked you even you were like yeah this is me i didn't know what was that thing uh first uh when you when i started when i started doing counseling i thought it's for helping other people and all that mm -hmm. stuff but then i realized oh my god this is for me also yeah like if I actually took this seriously, it's for me because I healed a lot. Because there are so many things I was going through at that time, you know, because I'm still young and I'm just fresh from high school. There are so many things I don't know. So I think being in that class, uh, uh, being in that class and how young I was, yeah. it felt like an advantage. You know, like there are things that I know now that people don't know, you know, in their early 30s and late 20s. So for me, one thing that changed so much is the fact that I got to learn myself, to know my strengths and my weaknesses. And I honestly, my confidence came out of that because I was such a shy person. I was never, I could not speak to people. And if I did, it was like a mask. Mm. Like I used to wear a mask of people, you hide them. Later on, you just like, you, you just mute so for me during that time i really learned how to comment and to really appreciate myself mm -hmm. and, and yeah i think learning myself is one of the biggest things i got from learning psychology yeah 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 uh, self-awareness so it's the it's a huge huge benefit of being in a psychology class it helps you yeah. figure out yourself figure out people it's such an interesting concept um yeah i agree with that that's that's really dope um so you mentioned uh, uh, again i'm gonna go back to what you mentioned initially about you being a psychologist and having worked in the last five years as a psychologist um what kind of clients do you treat what kind of mental health issues do you handle in your practice um the fact that i am young uh, you'll, i'll end up just working with young people <laughs> so i've worked uh relationship issues some testing issues People have faced trauma, you know, even crisis. So it's 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 been something like that is really confined to the to the young people. Uh, yeah, I've also tried couple therapy for young people. So it's, it's I've tried a, a few few things <laughs> here and there. So um, yeah, I think I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So when people are looking for a therapy, a young therapist for a couples issues and relationship issues, they should be looking for you. Yes, they should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because sometimes, uh, sometimes people uh, uh, need. Sometimes people are looking for a specific counselor to help them with a specific thing they have, and so once they hear that uh, you deal with relationship issues, especially among young people, then I think that's a good selling point for for you as well um, as a, as a mental health professional. Um. Yeah. These young people that you've dealt with, what is the what is what is something that they have taught you about uh, being a therapist, about um, life, about young people in general? What have your clients taught you about about this work that you could never have learned in a classroom? Yeah, I think one of those things that I have learned from the young people is that change is hard. Yeah, it's really hard. 
like knowing uh, coming from a deep from different backgrounds you know we, like we are all influenced by our environment mm -hmm. and some of the things that we are influenced uh, are not usually positive so being able to change certain behaviors to positive ones is one of those things that i picked that is very hard for people and I usually I usually give it a like an illustration with a snake like the way a snake tries to you know to remove it um to shed its skin it keeps on you know uh moving all the time and it's not comfortable it just has to keep on moving so for me i think that's one of those things i've picked from the young people the one change is so hard because we don't know anything you know different we know what is here this is what we have been taught this is what i have seen so anything other than that is very very hard for me to adjust and they uh and even trying to change they they face a lot of you know a, uh, a lot of battles because you know that in uh if you're trying to change personally even the environment yeah it will always try to hit yeah. you back you know to take you back where you are you you're from so i think for me change is one of those things that i have picked that is very very hard for people even uh the young people mm -hmm. yeah um yeah i think that that's it and also the fact that uh it keeps on inspiring me to become a better parent, <laughs> I feel. <laughs> like there's so many issues that come in from the family and you just get so challenged and you're like, oh my God, what if my kid ends up in this chair, you know? Mm -hmm. Like the, the thing that people, people share and you're like, like it, sometimes you even feel like crying, but you know you're not allowed to cry, you can't cry. <laughs> so some things are just, it just inspires you or motivates you to become better uh yeah i think those are just those are the things that i've picked from, from the time i've done session yeah i agree change is a difficult thing what what do you think makes it so difficult though what what is it um other than of course the resistance from the environment and people not wanting you to change um other than that what what do you think is the reason people struggle with change so much um you know like uh you're used to something like we're all used to like it's a routine so the moment someone changes that routine for you it becomes very hard for you to adjust so i think the problem is uh, wait, the, the reason why it's the, the reason why straight change is hard is because of that adjustment that adjustment to become I mean, something that is different something that is not you of you that is not you I think that's what is very difficult um, for people to experience. Yeah, I think I think that adjustment to becoming to become somebody totally new and to learn a new behavior is like it's something so new to someone. And before they learn, it needs a lot of openness. It needs a lot of willingness to to learn a new behavior. So yeah, I think it's that that, that adjustment is the. <laughs> Yeah, I love for Kukisha Zoya Kitu, Kuyacha Nikitu. So I think it's just a whole complicated thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Um, I think also uh, something that I've noticed when it comes to change that makes it difficult is also the issue of the fact that change is goes hand in hand with loss. So when somebody realizes that um, changing is also going to result in a loss of some sorts, it doesn't matter what the loss is. It could be a loss of um, identity, personality, um, mm. something that people, it could be loss of an environment that you are used to. So that fear, that fear of loss and, and the, the discomforts of, uh, of grief, the discomfort of grieving something that you've lost, an identity, a part of you that you thought you were, and realizing how much yeah. time you have lost living in this one box that you are, and now you have realized that there are other ways of being. I think that loss can be, that, that loss can be very scary. And that can be a reason why people struggle with change and yeah i think yeah. it requires us to as therapists to walk to walk the clients um through that journey of grief and to see how they can handle that grief and also be open to the existence of something new in their lives so yeah i think the yeah. loss the aspect of loss can be very difficult and painful for most people because um nobody wants nobody wants to lose yeah, nobody's mm -hmm. walking around asking can i lose this thing can i lose my identity can i lose my personality you know so yeah, I think that's a, yeah. that's that's very true. Um, I think it's 
they go through the the stages of grief yes. yeah 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 before they get to that acceptance level it takes a lot of a lot of a lot of strength mm-hmm. to get there mm-hmm. so yeah, and, yeah and, and for those who might not know what the stages of grief are um maybe you can tell them uh, uh, please gadoni tell them what the stages of grief are for those who are who are hearing it for the first time uh, stages of grief there is denial um uh, there is anger there is uh, there is bargaining uh, then there is depression then there is acceptance yeah yeah that's true so everybody goes through those uh, those those um stages they are not linear they uh, you can ebb and flow in one and the other um you can go fro- forward and one day you are at acceptance and then two days later you are back at denial and you don't know what happened yes. and you are doing so well mm-hmm. so if if you're going through a moment of grief and loss at this time in your life give yourself grace and empathy to understand that you're human and um loss is not linear grief is not linear and you get there when you get there so don't let anybody rush you um thank you so much for sharing that uh, gadoni uh before we move on to another phase of this conversation let me take a minute to say hi to rosie and wanjiru njoroge um sherry muturi j nyanjui and kisera yes thank you so much guys for coming through to the live and i hope you have had a wonderful day and you found us in the middle so we are going to continue and you can watch the the part that you missed once we end the live um so shifting gears just a little bit to move uh, to something a bit more personal and to demystify to 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 remind people that mental health professionals are human beings would you please tell us about uh, your personal experience with mental health what has been your journey with mental health have you gone through anything that has been disruptive to your mental health and yeah what was that like for you okay um i think when it came to self esteem you know sometimes self esteem just sounds self esteem it's low and stuff but it when it's so when it's so low it can lead to depression and for me the, i have I had, I had gone through that season especially when um when i was in primary going into high school just before i left i was a bit better but that period ya yeah, ukimaliza na katikati let's say from class 7 to form 3 there yeah. my my self esteem was so low and i would think of myself like like literally like a failure like someone i'm talking and you're you have potential i'll be like huh? what do you mean <laughs> what potential are you talking about because i don't see it so anything that someone would say positive about me I'll turn it to a negative like I'll never see it as a positive so and I realized it really took a toll on me that it also uh kind of also affected my 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 grades so that's in high school uh after after high school I think it was the com- the comparison the self comparison and comparing yourself to others it's so simple but it's such a real thing like you let's say you are at home you just seen people's lives moving on you know everyone is having everything and you're just there so it was just like a whole roller coaster of up and down and it really i think me coming out of it is to when i was doing my my personal therapy and also having like friends and family to support me there and you know uh, i remember uh, my partner used to say you know what like this is their season let them enjoy your season then this is yours your time will come and uh, it's true because maybe sometimes when you're young we don't see ahead you just see our situation at the moment so i be- for me comparison and self esteem issues was such a big thing but i don't know if i didn't do I, if i did not work on myself and doing therapy and all that stuff i think i would be i don't know because <laughs> having worked out my self esteem made me become so confident with myself with my body you know like these days I am like where is the stress in the kwanga na yo iko api i can don't even bother about what people say i don't like it's it's like a, a like i created like what is this thing that uh is this like i created like a wall where by no one can get to me 
anything negative you say, it's like it hits the wall and comes back to you. So for me, self-esteem is something that I really, 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 really worked on. Yeah, I think those are the things. I don't know if there's anything else. Because, you know, I'm, I'm still young, so it doesn't, I've not really gone through it. But those minor stuff is what I've really, really experienced. And maybe, you know, sometimes when you also leave high school, there are times maybe I had issues with my, my mom. You know, the, you know, it's like a new person. So there's that old shabang of drama. So those are things that I, because I didn't know how to deal with them. It used to affect me and I didn't see, I never used to talk to somebody else about them. So I, I, I thought it was just me. I'm going through it alone. So, yeah, because I, I remember most of my therapy sessions was just my relationship with my mother because it was just too much. So, but I, I think where I am right now is way better. Even where my relationship with my mom is, it's way, way better. So, yeah, I think those are the things I've really, really uh, gone through that really put me down. Yeah. And, but now I think, now we are, we are good. I am good. <laughs> That's that's great to hear. Yeah. That's great to hear. Um, I I understand especially the comparison, uh, and especially at the high school, there's usually that period of time when people have gone to campus, some people have not gone to campus, some people have stayed at home, some people have gotten pregnant, some people have gone to their relatives in the U.S., and some people are mm. at home and they have nothing to do, and then it becomes very painful when you realize that um, you when you start feeling like you're the one who has been left behind. So um, yeah. that comparison can actually be quite quite a heavy experience and when you don't have people around you who understand and who can support you it can be difficult um before yeah. before you went to for your personal therapy who was supporting you during this time what what was it that they did that helped you and made you feel that you had support during your most difficult time um honestly it was my partner hey i think i don't think I I don't know. Sometimes I, I usually tell him I don't know how to survive because he's a bit older than me. So there are things he had seen that I have also not experienced. So, so he could see it like, you know, this is a stage in life. You get through it. It's normal. So I think being told those things, like it's a normal stage. For me, it's just, I don't know, it, gives, it gave me some motivation. Like, you know what? It's just, uh, it's a passing storm. It will just end. Yeah. So I think for me, uh, my partner and my friends and also my family, they really, really supported me. Yeah, they really did. But my, my partner, eh, yeah, 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 look at too. <laughs> like, I think for him, he really, he really helped, held me because there are times I will literally break. There are times I'll be like, you know what, I amount to nothing. Like, you know, my friend are going to jump me, see us, do what? You know, the times I'm to like, like, so I was telling him, Josiata, can you imagine now, like the thing I was stressing about is what I have now. So I, I think it, it was that being told that it's normal, I think it really pushed me to, to get where I am today. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, And, and I'm also glad to hear that you had people around you who are very supportive and, and recognizing that is quite, quite the important thing. Um, yeah. When, it come, when you, you've mentioned your personal therapy and I'm curious about how that became a thing how did you find your therapist how was what was the journey like of finding a therapist people out here say that finding a therapist is difficult um, how did you find your therapist how was your experience with therapy are you still in therapy what has that journey looked like as well um for me of course when you're doing diploma it's a must you have no option you have to whether you're doing diploma or you're doing certificate or you're doing a degree master's which it's a must you do personal therapy because you see you can't help someone if you've not helped yourself. So for me, therapy was uh, something I had to do because part of school. How did I find my therapist? The school provided the therapist. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, so I, yeah, it wasn't such a hassle for me to get one. And I've never changed to one. She has always remained the same, my same counselor because I really liked how she did her sessions and how the, the way she conducted it and how it, it, it went. And the sessions are good. That's what I'm saying. Like it needs a lot of willingness and open. Like you might you need to be open-minded, because I I remember the time I was doing my diploma. All my problems were like I need to 
sort my mom issues. Like I need to just sort those ones first. And she actually supported it. Zuri, but when I did my degree, I was like, you know what? My mother, Kando, ni mimi. And I need to focus on me. Because you know, there's a way you need to separate uh, your issues from other people and focus on yourself. So that's what I did. And therapy has been such a great experience. I think if you get a good counselor, the experience is amazing. So amazing because you learn so much about yourself. You learn so much about other people. So yeah, uh, am I still doing the therapy sessions? No, I've not yet. I've not gone back because I finished like uh, a few months ago. So I'm not. I've not yet gone back to to doing therapy. But my experience has been amazing. Yeah, that's great to hear. That's really good to hear. Um, what 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 has your therapist? You you praised her a lot. I'm curious. What what has your therapist taught you about being a therapist? What makes her such a good therapist? And what have you taken away that you apply in your own work? Uh, well, that's a good question. I think she showed me that you have to you see. There, there's, there's something I came to realize that sometimes we find that counselors wear hats. They're like a doctor, like the times you're you're a good person is the time you're not a good person. Utataka Simpson being such a caring person, but outside there you're very mean to other people. But for her, I just saw that genuineness in her, because we uh, outside the sessions and during the session, she's still the same person. So for me, that the genuineness is everything to me. Because I don't see like at me, she's faking it. I can't tell, I can't say that she has ever shared my information with anyone. Even the times we just meet one uh like on the corridors of where I'm working. And it's just you know, so I think the genuineness is, is everything for a counselor, yeah. So I think for me that's what that's what uh, I really like about her. Yeah, 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 I agree with you. I agree with you. Um the that genuineness always stands out because we are working towards authenticity and as yeah. counselors if we can't yeah. practice authenticity then even with the clients it's going to become very difficult and i think clients can tell when you're not being authentic they can tell when you're not being genuine yeah. and so you actually focus a lot on trying to make sure that you don't have to hide and you can just um align the person you are on the inside and on the outside that those two people look the same i think that's an important yeah. aspect in therapy really really um yeah. great yeah. lesson there um so I want I want to say a big shout out to Lavish Baby Lona and Wagura Eric and Monkisa. Thank you guys for coming through to the live. If you have any questions for Gadoni, you can send them in the comment section and we'll read them out. Whether it's questions about therapy, about psychology, about being a psychologist, um, yeah, send them send them all through and we're gonna respond to them before we end the live. Um, Thank you so much, Gadoni, for sharing your personal experience with mental health, your personal experience with therapy. It's very um, important that we do so, so that um, our clients do not see us as perfect, so that our clients do not put us on a pedestal, so that our clients realize that we are human beings and we struggle with some of these things because we are, again, human. And it makes, it makes therapy feel even more authentic, as you've said. It's, it makes the client realize yeah. that um, you're the same human being that they are and your struggles their struggles are not unique uh their struggles are not um they're not they're not just uh unique to them even other people struggle with these things and i think it also makes um connecting with the client easier when they realize that you're not perfect so they feel that they don't need to act perfect in your presence so i think that's a very important thing thank you so much for sharing your experience um we are coming very close to the end of this live but i want to find out a couple of things from you starting with um, what what do you wish more people, especially more young people, because that is the demographic you work with, and mm -hmm. people who have struggled with comparison, people who have struggled with self-esteem, um, people who have struggles in their relationships with their parents, especially their moms, what, what message do you have for them about what they can do to make things easier on their part? Um, when it comes to comparison, I think it's just you have to believe and trust in the process. You literally just have to like it's like you have no option. There's no way you you can tell the future. You don't know tomorrow. So if today you're at home, 
like as a young person and you're in school like enjoy that phase of your life enjoy that season of your life because another season is yet to come yeah. so there's no need for the the pressure though it's there and i'm not saying that it's not going to be there it will always be there it's going to be an on and off thing but you always have to remember that our thoughts are our driving force so if your thoughts are irrational then you you'll drown yourself to to depression you'll drown yourself to uh to feeling so bad about yourself and also comparing yourself with other people so i think when it comes to comparison just trust in the process and it's gonna it's gonna work out yeah and um when it comes to like parental uh, issues i think one thing i learned is never engage with your parents do not do not do the re- don't react like if there's an argument just stay calm don't don't do not get do not go to the same level let's let if your mom or your father is angry don't get to the same level that they are like you because let's say for example you're young and you're still staying in your parents house you can't be you know you can't be fighting with them like the next time the next minute you'll be seeing your clothes outside or not i'm being with okay so you have to respect them no matter what sometimes uh we also need to extend grace to our parents because uh they're coming from a generation where emotions was like what it is it, is, it was not a thing for them they like even understanding their own and understanding other people's emotions it's not something that they were in, they are informed about i think now is when maybe they will start realizing it because there's a lot of communication in reg- sorry in regards to uh to parental relationships of uh, yeah parent, mother and child or parent to child relationships so i think extending your grace extending grace to them try to understand them where they are coming from and um do not react <laughs> do not react because reacting leads to more damage so i think i think that's that's what I'll, i would i'll advise the young people yeah yeah um thank you for sharing that and i hope anybody listening will find that useful um in their situation especially what you've touched on when you live with uh, your parents and you're dependent on them there are some things that you're not able to do like um boundary setting might become very difficult in your when when you're living with people who you're dependent on and so sometimes you might have to do things that you don't want to do just to make sure that uh, you have a roof over your head but um as as you said trust the process um the future is always greater and better it takes a bit of time but you will get there so don't don't lose hope um yeah. what what resources would you highly recommend that any of those people who you've mentioned those people who you've spoken to with that message what resources would you highly recommend that they check out for their mental health well-being if they don't have the opportunity to go to therapy uh that's a good question and i don't know if there's any other option honestly because i feel like maybe if you don't want to go for therapy i think you use a lot of journaling because um the, the There's so many things that go on in our heads like honestly like our brains are, like are not wired to think ne- positively so most of the time we just think negatively and i think journaling is a good tool to use if um just to be able to, to help you understand your thoughts and your emotions because sometimes things can be too much that you can't even find that therapist when as a kind of therapist like in maybe a yuko and you need to really share so journaling can really really help you to yeah to use it to to relieve your emotions <laughs> i think another thing that i let me say if maybe music i don't know like resources it's just i can't say like read a book because reading a book and how you feel are totally different things because i think just use things that can really help you feel like a relief if it's journaling if it's listening to music or listening to um, the there's times uh, you can listen to uh i don't know the anxiety kind of music things that just calm you down yeah when you're going through you can just insert your earphones or headphones and just listen to them and just look up at the sky and some, <laughs> or something of that sort yeah so i think uh when it comes to resources and you're not um you don't really want, want to to go for therapy for me i'll literally just i'll vouch for journaling because there's nothing 
I don't I don't think there's anything else unless you what what do you think the they can like, what do you think can be of help to them um i highly, uh, yeah i highly encourage i highly encourage uh, journaling as you've mentioned which is an important aspect so that you can think through your thoughts and help yourself calm your mind uh putting mm-hmm. things on paper makes it easier for you to digest them um but above and beyond that there are several free mental health resources that i will be linking to in the description box of this video so you can check those out uh, especially if you're in Nairobi there's a lot of mental health services that are free you can go to NMS hospitals and you're going to find therapists there who are going to offer you therapy services um there there are really videos youtube videos that you can watch to learn to grow yourself to become to de- to do self development work um to deal with self esteem self uh, um yeah self esteem issues to help yourself grow that muscle of resilience and to be able to sit with emotions to learn how to regulate your own emotions all these videos are available on social media um and even on youtube especially so if there's a specific uh, issue you're going through maybe you're trying to deal with anxiety there are so many videos about anxiety how to relieve anxiety breathing techniques um self soothing techniques you can check them out all of them and if you want any specific tool you can email me and i'll send it to you so don't feel stuck as i said there are so many free resources free mental health services in Nairobi. So, and even there are some that are online. So check them out. I'm going to be linking them in the description box of the video. And yeah, that will be very, very helpful. But, and, and thank you. Thank you, uh, Gadoni, for, for what you've mentioned. Um, as you come to the end of this session, what, uh, what, what is it that you do for self-care that you think we can borrow from you or something you can teach us that has been useful for your self-care journey? What, what is that something? Wow. <laughs> Um honestly for me self care is what i just mentioned it's either i do a lot of journaling or i listen to music honestly like i've realized that these days when my when my moods are just everywhere i just listen to the best like my best kind of music and i just find that my mood changes so uh apart from listening to music i do a lot of cleaning i can try to just clean and maybe <laughs> yeah i think that's one of those things or go out for a drive sometimes like i usually tell my partner like i feel like i just want to go and scream i just go somewhere and scream so for me that's what i do i either go for a drive i do a lot of cleaning i do i listen to music or i take long showers as much as the money expensive <laughs> yeah that's all I, that's all i do i don't think there's anything else mm, that i do i think that's it yeah all right thank you so much for sharing that um and i i, I self care i think uh, it's something that i mentioned in a video one of the videos that i mentioned i did and i mentioned that self care looks different for everybody so make sure that you do something that works for you do something that um helps you calm uh, calm down your emotions regulate your nervous system that is what self care should look like so don't feel any pressure to do any specific thing do the things that work best for you so thank you so much for sharing that and i think i have lost you from the live gavoni i can't see you and as we wait for gavoni to, to get back on oh there you are i think we lost you for a second Hello. Ah, okay. Ah, luckily we have come to, luckily we are coming to the end of this. Uh, oh, oh. Yes, yes, I can hear you. And I I was saying that luckily we are coming to the end of the live and um the last part that is remaining is for you to tell the people who have been listening how can they find you if they are looking for a therapist? where can they find you what is the easiest way to contact you if they have been listening and they are like yes i want their money to be my therapist how can they find you yes we can hear you gazoni but we can barely see you um wamzi ivy mbwa masi disturb topic shiko kagumba thank you so much for joining the live um Yes we uh, we can hear you I don't know if you can hear us um, 
Okay, can you hear me? So can I? Yes. I can. Oh, yes, yes, I can hear you. <laughs> uh, uh, you asked if where they can reach me. Yes, how can people reach you if they are looking for a therapist and they, they have listened to you and they're like, yes, I want Gadoni to be my therapist. What is the easiest way for them to find you? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, Gatani, we can barely hear you. So I don't know if you want to type that out in the comment section, and I'm going to share it in the description box of the video. Could you repeat your, uh, how people can find you? Gavani, can you hear me? Hi. Me. Unfortunately, we cannot. Um, you, you seem to have come, yeah, it seems to have stabilized a little bit. Um, it's totally fine. Um, you've mentioned in the chat that it's about your network. So sorry to hear that, but uh, luckily we are coming to the end of the live. So maybe you can just repeat the way that people can find you. Maybe you can type it in the chat and I will share it in the description box. The easiest way for people to find you when they're looking for a therapist. I think... After that, you can just talk and I'll be able to share my contact. Okay. Okay. That's fantastic. Um, anybody listening, please reach out to Gadoni on her Instagram. It's at Sony dot underscore Gadoni. So that's how to find um that's how to find Lynette Gadoni as your therapist. Thank you so much Lynette for coming through to the live and thank you for all the information that you've shared with us, for all the wisdom you've shared with us. We really appreciate your time. And everybody who has been able to join the live session, I really, really appreciate you and I appreciate your time as well. Share this video with a friend, share this video with somebody who might be looking for a therapist, you never know. Share it uh, share this video in your WhatsApp groups. Share it in your WhatsApp stories. Let people know that therapists are available. We are trying to stop this uh, discussion. That is the question we are trying to answer by, by having this show. So share this live recording with your friends. Share it in your WhatsApp group. Share it in your family group. Let people know that we are available. If you're looking for therapy sessions, you can reach out to uh, Infinity Wellness Consultants and you, we can direct you to the specific therapist you're looking for. We have family therapists, we have uh, occupational therapists, we have um, counseling psychologists, we have addiction therapists, we have child psychologists, marriage and family therapists. So we have everybody that you're looking for. Just send us a DM or send us an email and we'll get, in, we'll get back to you in 48 hours or less. With that said, thank you again, Gadoni, for coming to the live. I don't know if you have a parting shot that you would like to share. Um, this is your, your opportunity. I think Gadoni is stuck. Oh, Gadoni's, Gadoni's internet is completely gone. Anyway, um, yeah, I think I think we will not be able to hear Gadoni's parting shots because of the internet. Yes, barely, and uh, it keeps disconnecting. I'm so sorry. I uh, decided to do that thing. No worries, no worries. Uh, yes, this is your opportunity to give us a parting shot as we end the live. 
Oh, I just wanted to say thank you, Jennifer, for, for this live. I think we can do more and more and more. Uh, my parting shot is that people should try therapy. Therapy is a good thing. Um, I think the only thing you need to do is just be open-minded and willing to share our experiences so that we can heal and change our behaviors. So I think that's for me. And also, if you feel like studying counseling, it's a good thing. You should try and study counseling. Yeah. But for other people, just for yourself, yeah. just to earn that knowledge so that you can understand how you think and how other people think and why people do the things that they yeah. do and act the way they do. So, yeah, that, I think that's my parting shot. And I'm so sorry. No, no worries. Uh, the internet always does that. Um, you cannot really control it, so don't worry too much about it. These things happen. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming to the live. As I said, we appreciate your time and we appreciate your presence and the wisdom that you've shared with us today. For everybody who's been able to join as well, Asante Nisana, um, just hold on for a second for me to grab a book. So for therapists who are watching this, um, my book is out. I, it, it's called Dear Beginner Therapist, a handbook for mental health professionals. You can order your copy as soon as, you, uh, as, as you're ready. Just let me know in the DMs and I will get in touch with you and you'll get a hard copy as soon as possible. So that's for the therapists who are listening, for therapy students, for people who have just graduated, for people who are still in school, um, for, for, for beginner therapists who have started in their, in their first or second year of practice, this book is for you. Let me know so that I can send it to your way. It's called Dear Beginner Therapist. Support Kenyan authors. <laughs> Support Kenyan authors. And tell your friends to tell their friends. And if you're watching and you're not a therapist, but you have friends who are therapists, you can buy them the book as a gift as well. It's uh, very affordable. So just come to my DM and I'm going to let you know. With that said, again, Gadoni, Asante Sana, I wish you a wonderful rest of the week and take care of yourself and take care of your mental health. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. God bless you. Bless you.